level, Senator Marco Rubio delivered a powerful rebuttal to President Obama's State of the Union this week. But you wouldn't know it from the mainstream media. They were fixated on the fact that he needed a drink of water. MS, uh, NBC's cable news operation played it over 150 <laughs> times, and CNN thinks that it could actually hurt his career. Take a listen. Can a drink of water make or break a political career, a U.S. senator, possible presidential candidate? Going to find out. These things happen when you don't really know what you're saying or believe what you're saying. The Florida senator certainly felt the heat and couldn't help but swallow his own pride as he turned water into whining. Marco Rubio's Watergate moment, it's being called, was an awkward one for both him and many in the Republican Party who see him as the GOP savior. It's being called Rubio's Watergate, even zero dark thirsty. <laughs> so we've seen President Bill Clinton drone on and on and on at State of the Unions, and then when he said in conclusion, people clapped. We've seen the president chew Nicorette gum at the prayer breakfast. We've seen Joe Biden and John Kerry yawn. But still, no obsessive Dana of media pondering about that or the end of their careers. So is this just a big distraction because Rubio is a rising star? So let's just focus on the gulp of water heard around the world. Well, it's also a great way not to have to actually learn any policy that you would have to talk about. So you could just like talk about Marco Rubio. You do take a risk when you say that you're going to do the response. Um, the only reason any of those responses, whether you're Democrat or Republican, if, if they are memorable, it's only because something went wrong or something was kind of weird. And if he hadn't have taken that drink of water, I will bet you money that they wouldn't have even talked about Marco Rubio for more than 20 seconds. But instead, they just piled on. What I didn't like, what, the piling on, you know, you can kind of expect it. I loved how Marco Rubio's office handled it, you know, with humor and you know, God reminds you how you're human at odd times. But when the White House piled on, I thought that was not, and I, think, I don't think that represented President Obama well, and I, I would hope that he would have thought that was not a good idea. Well, they could have just taken the high road and said, everyone gets thirsty, ha ha, and, and let it go. Instead, they just look like total jerks. Well, and I think it's starting to backfire, Eric, because Rubio has turned this gaffe into gold. He's received 3,000 new Twitter followers. He said, I'm going to start drinking water in the middle of all my speeches, because <laughs> he did get that attention Dana was talking about. He's been raising money. Eric with branded water bottles at $25 a pop. What a great way to handle a situation like this and just be self-deprecating. First of all, I'd like to point out, Dana, I pointed your theory out that there was, there was a no-win situation. That, that response really uh, if, for the contender should, should turn that one down. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Watergate. Al, not so sharp, Sharpton says it's Watergate and zero dark thirsty. <laughs> He spent more time talking about Rub uh, Marco Rubio's water issue than he did Benghazi, and that's mm. sca scary and sad. Um, I will say, though, if I'm Marco Rubio, I go, what, what happened there? Did I really need to lean way <laughs> over out of the shot to grab a yeah. bottle of Poland Spring water? It should have been a clear glass with some water. Take a sip. Okay, move on. The guy clearly has dry mouth issues. I, we spent a lot of time with him down in, in mm -hmm. Tampa where he, every time he would get up and speak, he would need to drink, but that's okay. But he, it was so awkward. Well, I, I have wonder to admit, if it was, was awkward. If chronic dry mouth is covered under Obamacare. We're not sure. I mean, there was only a minute and a half right. left to the speech, so that's a very good point. But you brought up Al Sharpton. He's also human. Remember this? We have more to go to build a movement of resistance, but resist we much. We must and we will much about that be committed. <laughs> again, Al, what was that again? Oh, I forgot. You're not perfect. So what about that, Brian? I remember that clearly because he had just started the week before, and I thought, oh, give him a break because you kind of glued to the prompter when you first started. If I don't care if it was President Obama or anybody else, I feel for somebody in that situation because your, your mouth's dry. You said it's chronic. I had no idea. By the way, the starch on your shirts are phenomenal. Thank you. There's never a wrinkle. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. The reason why Marco Rubio will be able to bounce back from this and Bobby Jindal needed some time to rehab from it is because Bobby Jindal didn't hop him back into the national spotlight. Rubio's all over immigration. He's still the go-to guy in all these issues. He's going to make you forget about it because he's going to be, be in the middle of five more news stories over the next three weeks. Bob, he's not going to go into hibern hibernation. Yeah, Bob, uh, someone who used to work in President Obama's administration called Marco Rubio very dangerous for Democrats because he can connect emotionally. Is there worry? 
uh, in the Democratic well, Party about Rubio? Sure, there's worry. And I mean, this is a, a, a much ado about nothing. I don't mm -hmm. know why anybody makes a big deal of it. You know, by the way, it wasn't Bill Clinton. He said uh, in conclusion that when he got that was the State of the Union. It was when he gave the the uh, convention speech. Uh, oh, that's in right. 1988. And then what did he do? He went on Leno yeah, and right. played his, played his exactly. saxophone, and he went out and made a joke. Is there anything Rubio's doing? Arsenio. I think he's going to backfire on people. I don't, I don't think it's that big a deal. I really don't. I think Rubio, look, he wasn't well served. He should have had a glass of water there. And Eric yeah. and Dana are right. You don't want to follow the President of the United States. These, no. Whoever came up with this, uh, you know, uh, follow the State of the Union idea, which was, is about 10, 15 years old now, is a bad idea. I agree. I think that they should do away with it altogether. Uh, for, um, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe the Democrats wouldn't, but I don't see what it gets you. But why does it have to be that setting? If you're going to do a response, why right. don't you yeah. go Pack somewhere? An auditorium, a huge auditorium, and have music and, and make band. it very. Remember when girl. Governor McDonald did it from the State House of Virginia? Yeah, yeah. That but was, it was still empty. It was, it was empty. Quiet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That was Bobby Gonzalez doing that down in no, the. Louisiana. That was another one. No, but, no I mean all of them. Right. I can remember them because of the things that went wrong. I got I got in trouble for the Jindel, my explanation of Jindel, which I won't get into. Get yeah. Into. Well, I, I, I will tell you that I, I disagree. I think you should forget about Marco Rubio should never bring another bottle of water on. Stop playing the joke. It's over. Well, and also, you know what the White House should have done? They had should have had President Obama send Marco Rubio like a case of water and with a, like a nice little like handwritten note. That would have been a nice, fun little touch to do instead of being jerk.